Hello and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to meet one of our assistant city managers, Laura Fitzpatrick. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. How long have you been on the job now? <laughs> I just passed my six month mark. No I started way. in November. Wow. Yes. And tell us your area of concern. I think people don't always understand that. They see assistant city managers and they think you all do the same things. You have a particular area of focus in the city. Yes, my the groups of my departments are the quality government, which it's best to think of those as the internal ser services, and that is human resources, information, t technology, f finance, which includes procurement, um, 311, which is an internal and external service, and also the leisure services, which... See, that's the fun stuff. Yes. Like, I think that yes. would be really, you know, not that the other stuff isn't fun, but you've got one of the particular city services that people really appreciate and like and, generally speaking, want to fund. <laughs> yes, yes. And the, the leisure services are recreation and the, li the library, and part of recreation is the museum. So. Mm -hmm. You've got the museums, parks. I mean, you know, it's it's really the sort of things that make up our community in a whole lot of ways. Yes, and and I always say that all of the services in a city make a community that is healthy and strong. A lot of times, people think of police and fire and public works as city government, but really, it's much more than that. Yeah, it is. People forget that. Yes. Well, let's talk a little bit about you as a person and where you were before you came to Hampton. You grew up in? I grew up in the Northeast mostly. Um, in my childhood, I moved around from New York to Maine to Michigan. And All places with snow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very yes. cold and snow. Yes. Yes. I came to Hampton from the city of Rio Rancho, New Mexico, which is a suburb of Albuquerque. So I moved from the desert to the waterfront. Yeah, the humidity. Yes. <laughs> um, I've been working for city government for 14 years now um, in four different cities. I've been an assistant city manager for the last 10. You have um, a particular enthusiasm for city government that I don't know if I've ever seen. Like you, you get excited when the music <laughs> plays at the beginning of city council meetings. I do. Where, where does that come from, Laura? <laughs> well, my personal story with city government is that I am a daughter of a city manager. My father is a city manager, and he's been doing that for over 35 years now. So I like to say that it's in my blood. <laughs> my, my family is very enthusiastic about city government and public service. But I think um, one of the things that makes me passionate about city government is service and customer service and service to the citizens. We don't have a product in city government. All we have is our service. And the services that we provide to the citizens impact how they feel about where, where they live. So it's really meaningful work. A lot of people don't see that, though. Maybe it is that growing up inside and having those values, people tend, I think, a lot of times to see the city as this big, nameless, faceless suck of money. <laughs> You yes. know, too many people, too much money, what do I get for that? You really see the individual services that we provide. Yes, and that's a challenge in working in public service. There's a lot of skepticism about government. And I think, I think that local government is the best level of government because you're the closest to the people. And there are, I've worked in four, in four different cities and there's wonderful people that work in city government in every de department of the city. Yeah, I, well, and you also then, I mean, you work with the fun, the, and the parks and rec in a lot of ways, the parks in particular, there's these physical assets that define our community in a whole lot of ways. I mean, when you think of Hampton, it's hard not to think of Buckrow Beach and Bluebird Gap mm -hmm. Farm and Sandy Bottom. I mean, the places that really enrich our lives. How do you, yes. how do you, you know, how do you make that real or keep that going or... Well, that I think it's it's important, you know, in the city manager's office to continually be telling the story of city services. We we talk about the story of city services a lot formally during the budget. Right. And the budget process, um, th those public meetings start in the winter and end in the spring. And <laughs> or sometimes it feels like they just go constantly. Yes, yes. But the public is involved for a period of time. Yes. And the budget. 
um, the rec recommending the budget to the city council is one of the most important things or the most important thing the city manager does and we s support her in that and the, adapting the budget is one of the most important things or the most important thing that the city council does because without the funding we don't have the services it's important to help the public and the city council understand the city services and all of the ins and outs of that so that they are pr prepared to adopt the budget. So that makes the, the parks and the infrastructure and everything that goes into that to providing those services and funding it, that makes it more, more real for, for them. I know, you know, you mentioned the libraries as part of the quality of life. Yes. Whenever we do surveys, you know, the things that citizens value or don't want us to stop doing, obviously police and fire are at the top of the list, but libraries, arts programming, I mean, a lot of those come out with, you know, something like 99.7 um, customer satisfaction or citizen satisfaction. It's people are inspired by those things. Yes, I think those are the services, the quality of life ser services are the ones that make the citizens feel really good about where they live. And those places are places where people can go to gather. And those citizens and, and customers usually are there for, um, for fun. <laughs> and that can be different than some of the, the issues um, in, in other de departments in the city. But also in terms of funding, sometimes People will say, oh, it's not as deserving of funds as the essential services. Because you really, I mean, it's a quality of life, a lot of what you do. It isn't essential. The world doesn't shut down if you don't have a public library in the way it doesn't shut down if you have police. I mean, it's, but, and so how do you really assess the value or the spending or the priorities that we put on quality of life, which frankly, I think we've cut back a lot during, mm -hmm. during the, the long, dark <laughs> yes. national funding crisis. During the recession, every city in the country ha has had to really wrestle with that, the, the tensions between the funding for more essential services and quality of life services have, have really grown. And ultimately, it's a policy decision. It's up to the city council they make that decision when they uh, adopt the, the budget. And as the staff, we're here to help them th through that. But I, I really like to emphasize in telling the story of city services that the quality of life services are just as important and the internal services are just as Im important as the other ones because it's all part of, of what makes a, s a city strong. Um, however, there's, there's limited funds and the city council has a, a really hard job in deciding you know, how to allocate those, those funds. I think especially in the next few years, it's gonna be really difficult because as we've had this whole belt tightening for longer than I've been at the city, it's been more than five years now, there's pent up demand for parks that need rehab, for expansions, for new facilities, you know, I think People have sort of been waiting, and, and obviously you can't do it all. Well, there's no way we can do everything on the backlog of expansion and maintenance that we've wanted to do. So, you know, figuring that out is uh, it's a delicate balance. And yeah, although it's ultimately council's decision, you and your departments kind of advise them in terms of setting priorities. Yes, and I think a very important part of that is you know, working with the city manager and the senior staff to explain the services and the impact on the citizens and the resources needed to have a, a service level that, that the community wants, that the city council wants, so that the city council can be the most in, informed when making those decisions. And there's a lot of, well, first of all, we do all the citizen surveys every two years, we do budget input, but the other thing is you, you guys in your department have a lot of citizen advisory boards. And again, because it is like whether or not you're gonna patch a pothole is a little more objective. Mm -hmm. there, there's a standard yes. for that. But what do we need for our libraries? What do we need for our parks and rec? I mean, there's an, a citizen appointed advisory board, um, the Arts Commission, the Arts Foundation, I know mm -hmm. that's not directly yours, but those quality of life things, we have citizens who guide it as much as the departments do, I think. Yes, that's a very good point. And the city of Hampton is actually known na nationally f for being a collaborative city that really in engages the citizens. And there's 
many, many boards here, citizen boards, more than in, in any other place where I've worked. And it's really great. You know, another um, great thing about city government is the teamwork. And that teamwork isn't just on the staff. It's between the staff and the city council and the citizens. And by using that, that team and the processes of government in place, you can get to, to where the community want, wants to go. Well, this touches on too. What was your perception of Hampton as an outsider? Well, I had been, the reason why I came here, why I why cho did you, chose Hampton, yeah, <laughs> is Hampton does have a reputation in city management as being a well-managed, professional city with a high qual quality of life. And I viewed it as you know, a good place for a city management professional and also as a good, a good place to live. So, and Hampton is the, the nicest place I've, I've ever lived or worked, and I've, and I've moved a lot. So. <laughs> Yay! Well, we're glad yes. to hear that. We yeah. hope you stick around for a Thank while. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, if you have a philosophy, a driving philosophy in your career, what would it be? Driving philosophy. Uh, to make things better, and that means, lot, that means lots of things in city government. Um, as I said, I've been an assistant city manager for 10 years. And I've you always look way too young to have that much experience. <laughs> and I've always worked in the city manager's office. So for me, my f philosophy is to support the city manager in her work, and do what she needs done to, to help lead the city and support the city council and the staff. And again, because we don't have a product in city government, it's all about service and providing good service. And that means lots of different things. That means supporting the employees of the city, the department heads of the city, um, the city council. And because city government is d dynamic and changing and the issues are changing and the challenges are changing, you need to be flexible and open-minded to um, be effective in, in that role. Okay. Um, is there anything I've forgotten to ask you that you want to add? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. And I want people to know that, um, you know, if you have a question about parks, you should go to the parks director, but that you are there as that, you know, intermediary person and sometimes working with the citizens, working with the departments, and also pulling departments together and doing cross-departmental things. I mean, you and yes. I have been a lot on yes. of the same committees already to try to... It, Hampton is a very collaborative place, as yes. you said. And so you're in charge of corralling a bunch of us when it's a complicated project. Yes, there's a lot of cross-functional teamwork in city government. And in the city manager's office, We that's one of, a, of our roles, is to, to help with that. And if anyone ever has any questions about city government, of course, you know, the, the best f first stop is to call three, 311, but you can always call the city manager's office if, if you don't know where to call. Okay. So. Well, thank you for coming by today, Laura, and thank you for choosing Hampton. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit more about the assistant city manager's role and how things or responsibilities are divided up in that office, and you know who to call. Thanks for watching.